let's learn how to make a curved world shader graph like Subway Surfers. I've gotten a couple requests to make this and I've spent a week or two trying to figure this out and I will just say that this is by far the simplest shader graph I've personally seen for this effect so if that's your jam let's begin. But if you decide that you don't want to make this shader and you just want something that works out of the box there's a really great asset on the Unity Asset Store called Curved Worlds where you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's really cool and pretty reasonably priced so I will put a link in the description below if you want to check that out. But onward we go! Taking a look at Subway Surfers gameplay, let's make two important observations. Number one, they have this cool globe-like effect similar to Animal Crossing, which I covered how to do last week, but there's something interesting here. It's not only bending like a globe backward, but it's also bending to the side as well, so that the player has a better view of what's coming up literally around the bend. We now know that we need two things to happen to get this right. The farther away the road is from the player, curve the world backward and to the side. In other words, the world needs to curve exponentially depending on the player's position. Key word here being exponential. Looking at the finished version, I'm going to make the values extreme just so you can see the effect happening here. If we look at it from the side, you can see that the shape we're making is actually a parabola and it changes depending on where the camera is. But if we look at it from the top, we can also see that we're creating another parabola. So we're creating a 3D shape made from two parabolas. Fun fact, the shape is called a paraboloid, but I digress. Starting from scratch, I'm going to be creating a new URP project. We're going to be making this effect using Shader Graph, which is only available in URP or HDRP. I am now going to add in a plane, zero out its coordinates, and I'm going to scale it up a bit and so that it kind of looks like a road. Now that we have that, let's create our shader. I'm going to right click, go to Create, Shader Graph, URP, and then Lit Shader Graph. All lit means is that we want our shader to be affected by light. I'm going to name it Subway Surfer, double click, and open up Shader Graph. If you double click again, you can maximize this tab to get a much better view. Since we want this effect to be more intense the farther away the plane and the objects are from the player, we need to know where the player is in the world first. The easiest way to do this in this scenario is to find the camera's position. The camera will have a script on it that will be following the player like all third person games have. So this is essentially just a way to calculate where the player is. So we're going to add in a position node and a camera node. The position node provides you with the position of the object that the shader is on. We can also pull the position of the camera with the camera node. And since we wanna calculate the distance between the object and the camera, we're going to add in a subtract node to find that value. We are then going to subtract the camera position from the world position using the subtract node. The output here is a vector 3 value, so an x, y, and a z. But since we only want this effect to happen when the player is moving from the front or to the back, not when moving side to side, we need to extract only the z value from this equation. We don't want the curvature amount to change if the player moves from the left or to the right. We only care if the player is changing their value along the z axis. To do this, we're going to extract the z value from this vector 3 using a split node. It's a little confusing because the values say RGBA, but you can also use this when it comes to vectors, and in the case of vectors, these values are actually x, y, z, and w. In this case, b is equal to z, and from here we want to alter the z value. This is where our exponential effect comes in. We're going to plug our z value into a power node. Power as in x to the power of 2, if we remember our parabola formula from earlier. But what if we want to be able to control the strength of the curvature, either from front to back or from side to side? And what if we want the side to side curvature to be stronger than the front to back curvature? Well, in that case, we need to add a vector 3 node. Since I want to be able to control these values from the inspector, I'm going to create two float nodes and turn them into properties. One is going to be sideways strength and the other is going to be backward strength. And we'll plug sideways strength into the X slot and the backward strength into the Y slot. And we're going to leave the Z value at zero here since that is going to remain unchanged. Now that I have that, I need to multiply my new values by the power node so that we get that exponential effect. 
It's also a good idea when working with Shader Graph to constantly be thinking about what your final output is and what you're looking for. What we're really doing with this is changing the position of a mesh, so we're ultimately looking for a vector 3 value. Now that we have our formula, our new values, we can create an add node, add in those values, and plug back in the position of the object, so that as the position of the camera and player changes, the shader is updating the position of the mesh. The last thing to do before we plug this into our final output node is add in a transform node. The original position node is using world space, which is what we want. We want to access the position information of the object in regards to the entire scene, not to just itself. However, the final output node only accepts vector3 values in object space, so we just have to convert it at the end. Now, let's switch back to the editor and apply this to our plane. To apply a shader to an object, we first have to create a new material. To add a shader to this material, I need to find the shader dropdown at the very top here. The default is the universal render pipeline, but if I click into the dropdown, I can see a section for shader graph shaders, which the shader we just created is under. With that done, I can drag and drop my new material onto my plane. Now if we click on our object, we can see the properties that we created. I defaulted the float values to zero just so that I was only messing around with the values inside of the inspector. Now it doesn't take a lot to create a big effect, so we're working with teeny tiny values here, like .001 type values. Believe it or not, this is the bulk of our work, but what if we want to apply this to 3D objects like a bus or walls? And what if we want to change the appearance of our materials? Going back into Shader Graph, let's quickly create a way for us to add textures to our materials. Inside Shader Graph, if we want to add a texture, we need to add a Sample Texture 2D node and plug it into our base color. You could plug a texture in here and call it a day, but I'm going to add a 2D Texture Asset node, turn this into a property, and then plug it into the texture slot here so that I can add textures from the inspector. Now if we want to tile our texture, we need to add a tiling and offset node and plug this into the UV slot on our sample texture 2D node. Now the tiling slot takes two values, an X and a Y, but if I change one and not the other, I'm going to get some weird stretching happening. So ideally I want these values to be the same so the scale is always the same. Therefore, I'm going to add a vector2 node here, but control it with a single value, plugging in a float value here, and then turning it into a property so that I can control it from the inspector. Also, make sure that value on the vector2 is a 1 instead of a 0, or else you won't get any tiling. Now heading back over to our scene view, I can now click on our shader, plug in any texture, and start messing around with the tiling value to get the right look. I created this really simple road texture, so I'm going to plug that in now. Beautiful. Now, if I want to create the walls and the buses, I might have a problem. The plane looks great, but if I add a cube object here and scale it up to kind of look like a wall, you can see that it's not curving exponentially. It is changing, but not in the way that we want it to. And that is because the default cube object in Unity only has eight vertices. So Unity is accounting only for those eight vertices. But what about this entire middle section in between those? There's nothing there for Unity to change. So I went into Blender real quick and made a cube and added a bunch of loop cuts and imported back into Unity. With those side by side with the same shader, you can now see that this object bends with the world how it's supposed to. Just thought that was a good call out to make if you are running into that problem. You might just need more vertices. And just keep in mind that every object in the scene will need this shader attached or the objects will float and look odd. I will be posting a screenshot of the shader on my blog and I will also post the entire project file on my Patreon as well. And with a little razzle dazzle and some simple materials, we have a seed. Hopefully this was helpful and if you like this, you might also like my Animal Crossing shader video. Hope to see you in the next one.